Hey guys, this is Coach Sue with Physique Development. In this video, I'm gonna be going all over reverse dieting. So this is something, if you don't know what reverse dieting is, it's slowly increasing your calories after a dieting phase. And you might think, why would I want to diet in reverse? I just took all this time to lose weight. And reverse dieting can be extremely beneficial for lifestyle clients as well as competition clients. So I'm gonna talk a little bit towards competition clients just because um, a lot of the questions that I got on Instagram and my Q&A box were, in regards to post prep where someone is stage lean and then having to gain back necessary body fat. But realize this does apply to lifestyle clients or lifestyle diet uh, or cut and to competition clients. So the reason that you need to reverse diet is because if you go from eating this low amount of calories to doing a lot of cardio or even just a lower intake than you're used to and then jump right back up to eating normally, that's when you regain the fat that you lost. And the big goal within dieting is being able to maintain that. So in order to do that, you can go ahead and increase calories slowly until you get to maintenance and you can keep that fat off um, or to a minimum. So when it comes to reverse dieting, some of the questions I got, and I got two questions here that'll pop up on the screen is, how do you handle with body image and body dysmorphia as you start to gain fat back and then going from crazy lean, so stage lean, to gaining some weight, tips for changing mentality. And this is probably the hardest part, especially for competitors or anyone who's reached their goal weight or their goal physique and then having to gain back fat, it's very difficult. Um, and it's something that because you've been lean for so long or getting lean for so long, it's very hard to switch gears. So that's one of my top tips is to sit down and switch gears. It's the same thing from anything that you're doing in your life. If you reach a goal, you need to sit down, reassess what your next goal is, and then switch gears no matter what your goal is in life. So when it comes to reverse dieting, being able to let go of the notion that you're gonna stay that lean. I feel like that's a lot of people's spot is that they think like, oh, I can just increase calories and not gain any fat or any weight back. And while you can keep fat gain to a minimum, it's not always that you never see the scale increase. There's times where I see the scale increase and I actually look better, but if you just hold yourself to that number, that can cause a very, very slippery slope. So when it comes to reverse dieting, one thing I do is I sit down and I plot out what my upcoming goals are. Post show, my goal goal is whatever the judge's feedback is. The judge's feedback for me is that I needed more upper body muscle. I needed more density. I cannot add density and I cannot add muscle while still eating in a deficit and I just can't. I personally cannot do that. And so it's something that if I want to continue to be competitive, I have to realize that staying in a deficit or staying at low caloric intake and low body mass is not gonna help me reach my goals. So that's already one thing, light bulb going off as far as my goodness, I need to change to be able to reach my goals. So being able to sit down and recognize what that looks like for you. You're obviously not walking away being told that you can't, don't have to change anything and you're ready to go on to the Olympia stage if you are coming off the stage. There's always improvements to make and even if they're not improvements in your physique, recognizing what those improvements look like in your day-to-day -day life. And that's my second notion is I sit down and I write down all of the things that I'm currently feeling within dieting and realizing that by stopping dieting, I will fix a lot of those. So things like having a low sex drive, having brain fog, um, having low energy, having just your clothes not fit you, and then having decreased hormonal function. Um, and that kind of goes hand in hand with some of those other things, but you can have a sluggish thyroid, you can have low testosterone levels, you can have your sex hormones just in the wrong levels from prolonged dieting. Chronic dieting time and time again, or even yo-yo dieting can cause a lot of negative effects on your health. So you want to circumcise those as much as possible. So that's another thing is I want my health back. And so for me, I lost my menstrual cycle. And so getting my menstrual cycle back, again, getting libido up, being able to be in a spot where I actually can put on muscle mass and then can have a normal functioning brain. Towards the end of prep, I just was very foggy. Um, it was even something we were just talking about making these videos. And Alex was like, well, were you listening? I was like, yeah, I was listening. And he was like, well, you didn't listen the last time I did a video. And I was like, oh, I wasn't there that day. And everyone paused and was like, yes, you were, but I really was not mentally there. Like my mind was completely elsewhere. And that's something through the last few months of prep that I felt. And so that's something I don't wanna feel
feel for the rest of my life. So realizing I wanna get my brain function back, I want to feel the absolute best that I can, I want to get to that better spot. Um, so being able to recognize all of the things that you might not be able to do and then seeing what the opposite side of that looks like. It's even something for cardio, where doing that much cardio was eating up a big chunk of my day. I wanna have some of my day back. And then I also want flexibility back. Um, that's one thing that when people say, how do you keep doing reverse dieting and keep having a mental headspace that's positive? And I literally look at what dieting caused and it's a means to an end. So it's not that I look at dieting and say that was the worst thing ever, I'm never gonna do it again. But it's more so I look at it for what it is. When I am dieting, I can't be as successful in my business because I don't have as much mental capacity to give to it. And that in turn means I can't be as good of a friend as I want to. I can still be a good friend while I'm dieting, but I can't dedicate exactly what I want to to life out of that. Um, it's also something that I can't always go out to eat with my friends and family, and I don't wanna live that life where I feel like I have to make every single meal. That's not sustainable. So being able to see what it took me to get there and realizing I don't wanna live my life like that. Again, a means to an end. I can do it for a time frame, but I'm not gonna live my whole entire life like that. So being able to recognize, okay, dieting was able to reach me to my goal or get me one step closer to my goal or even improve your health in the short term. But if you stay in dieting for too long, it can start having detrimental effects to your health. So some of the other questions going over reverse dieting, we're asking about how do you know when to stop increasing? Is there a certain amount of fat macros you like to see female hormones in? How much do you increase carbs and fats by weekly? How do you know if you've hit maintenance calories? How long should a reverse last? As well as should you do it fast or slow? So I'll pop all of those questions up here on the screen because they kind of all go hand in hand here. So as far as knowing when you've hit your maintenance, when to stop increasing, um, one thing within maintenance is, is not a set point. It's not like my maintenance is 2,000 calories. Your maintenance might be within the range of 1800 to 2200. So recognizing that your maintenance isn't one set of calories, because it's not like if you eat 1950 one day, you lose weight. Um, and so you're like, oh, my maintenance is exactly 2000. And if I eat above or lower than that, then my weight just is all over the place. So it's not how the body works. So being able to see, okay, my maintenance is in this range of calories. And as you increase food back, being able to keep data points and being able to see what that looks like. That's another thing that ties into mentality. And I'll have the pictures pop up here of me um, a few days after my show versus me a few weeks after my show. And you might think, oh my gosh, in the few weeks after, your body looks better. And it's because my body just went through a lot through this prep. And then being able to increase food, your body sometimes just needs time to adjust. And so it's something that my food hasn't like shot up and keep raising each week. You don't have to raise it each week. Realizing that your body, you didn't drop food every single week. You don't need to raise it every week, but you do want want to get to normal hormonal function and feeling your best self as fast as possible. Because again, is that serving you or is that just serving the headspace that tells you that you need to be small and you need to be lean? So being able to look at that full picture and see, okay, in this dieting phase, I didn't lower food every single week. So I'm not gonna increase food every single week. And within dieting, I made a change, waited to see my response and then gauging things forward. So if you need to take some weeks away from body checking yourself, Yourself, that's another thing that can be very beneficial. When you're dieting, it's very easy to get into like anytime you walk past a mirror being like, okay, are my abs still there? I look great. Because when you get to the end of a contest prep, especially, you can normally stay lean throughout the whole day. When on a day-to-day -day basis, your body does change throughout the day and you might look a little bit different at night than you look in the morning and that is completely normal and okay. I know I definitely do, but it's something that can get very addictive as far as checking yourself out um, kind of looking at your body or especially within peak week and going into your show, you might be taking more and more pictures to send to your coach or you might have never looked that freaky and been like, let's document it. Um, and then it comes to the reverse and you're like, well, I've been documenting it so much, so I'm gonna keep documenting it, but that might not be doing the best for your mental headspace. So for me, I make sure that I'm not constantly, like the second I wake up in the morning, checking my abdomen, looking in the mirror, like all that. I even kind of switch over to wearing clothes that are less revealing, so I'm not as focused on my body. I'm doing exactly what I need to do, eating the macros my coach has prescribed, doing the cardio my coach has prescribed, and making sure my mentality is in the absolute best spot to keep making progress forward. And for me, that means maybe not wearing um, a 
as revealing clothes or maybe not wearing as form-fitting clothes or making sure that I give myself space to realize that my body is going to change. So being able to keep that in mind as you start to increase. So as far as knowing how many to increase each week or how often you should increase, that's going off of your biofeedback. So being able to make a change and then being able to read whether it's your weight, your pictures, your measurements, or just that biofeedback of how is your digestion going because digestion can slow down at the end of prep or the end of a dieting phase. How's your digestion? How is your libido? How are your stress levels? Looking at how your sleep is because sleep can be greatly affected at the end of a dieting phase. So being able to look at those factors and if you start seeing increases in that, just being able to keep those as your metrics, not being greedy and being like, well, I need to get to the 200 carb club or I need to get to the 300 carb club. Um, kind of dropping out as far as social media goes of comparing your macros to other people, how fast someone was able to raise their macros. And sometimes you guys might be annoyed that I say like, oh, it depends, or um, it's gonna depend as far as how fast you raise them or how much you raise them by. But truly, there is no metric here as far as like, you should raise it by this many grams of fat and this many grams of carbs each time you raise it and you should do it every two weeks. If that was the case, we wouldn't need coaches to read our feedback and tell us what to do. We would just be able to follow the guidelines and do them, but they're just that, they're guidelines, they're not rules. So being able to increase by a, a chunk, and I've seen girls, I've had clients that we can increase a lot right off the bat and be in a good spot. And I've seen girls where we've had to go slow to make sure that we're not having um, mentality spiral out of control or adding unnecessary fat because it's very hard when you add that fat or you increase and then you're like I need to get this off and then you want to enter another dieting phase so I'm gonna pop up another infographic here going over what happens when you yo-yo diet with your metabolic rate with your weight and how hard that is to repair from so another question that I'll pop up even with the graphic was just saying if you overeat in the beginning does that cause long-term problems or how do you um, get around that and the thing is it's just gonna take time and you might be uncomfortable in your body for a period of time. And then I'll flash back to again my pictures a few days post show after increasing food I didn't look or feel the best but I gave it time I kept doing what I needed to do and my body showed up for me. Your body is extremely resilient and extremely smart and you need to treat it as such but not so much that you take advantage of how resilient your body is and try to keep taking it from extreme to extreme. So as you raise food raise it I would say fats making sure that they get to 40 grams a day minimum and that is a number I will throw out because that is a number known for normal female hormones working at the right level so during contest prep you might dip below that lifestyle clients probably should not and I say probably because there's no um, hard and fast rules within all of this but being able to get your fat to a place that it can support hormonal function and being able to give yourself a few weeks before you go and get blood work I wouldn't recommend if you're like, well, I wanna see where everything's at to make sure I can take the right steps to get to where I need to get, um, your blood work at the end of prep might not be exactly where it needs to be. Giving yourself about six weeks to assess the situation, to give your body time, and then going to get blood work can always be a great answer there. So as far as how fast or slow, it's gonna be dependent, but really keep in mind your biofeedback, your health, as well as your mental health and where you're at there, but do not prolong the deficit longer than you need to because you've already been in a deficit it, you don't need to keep being in it. And then as far as when you know if you found your maintenance, it could be something where you keep your food and with it, when it comes to food, sometimes it's just prolonged intake at that, where I could be at the same macros and my weight stay the same, but I could be at the same macros for four weeks, my weight not change, the fifth week it does change. It's the same thing with dieting, where you might be at the calorie intake and then all of a sudden you have that whoosh effect or that paper towel effect being able to hit you. It's the same with reversing. So being able to keep some of these same concepts in mind as you go ahead and reverse diet. So looking back at some of the questions here, um, asking about how much weight should you gain in the first month? What's too fast and too slow? And this will be the same answer that I said is it depends. I've seen girls that need to gain weight back right away. I have clients that have had been having to gain five to 10 pounds back right away, and then they kind of stay at that range. For me, my body's normally fine if we increase calories a few hundred calories, we decrease cardio, and then it's something that I'm able to kind of slowly raise food and my weight kind of sits 
there and then all of a sudden it'll bump up past a number and then it will stay at that number. So for me, it kind of goes here and it stays and then it bumps and then it stays. Um, some people it goes like this, some people it goes here and then here. It's gonna change for each person there. Um, and then some other things to keep in mind when it comes to dieting. You wanna focus on your recovery, your strength, your sleep, your energy, your food focus, your mood and your libido. And when it comes to reverse dieting and why you need to do it, your body does this great thing called metabolic adaptation um, or adaptive thermogenesis. And when it comes to this, it's your body's safeguard. As you start to diet and you start to decrease calories, your body becomes more efficient on the lowered calories. That's why you have to keep lowering calories as you go into a deficit because your body keeps adjusting to it and keeps lowering. So your TDEE or your BMR could be lowered throughout a dieting phase as well and you need to be able to slowly reintroduce food so that it can get back to the base rate that it's at. So your body is adaptive and it's great in that way and sometimes it can be adaptive the other direction which is great because you might be able to eat more food really quickly and maintain a lean physique but it also is going to be adaptive on the way down. So being able to keep that in mind and you want to be able to raise it so you can raise those rates altogether to keep your body in the absolute best spot. Um, the other thing is looking at uh, the fact that your energy and your availability there. So you might see some girls um, that they start in the middle of their prep, they start reversing calories and they start their reverse diet. And then they're eating like a ton of food at the end and they're still staying so lean, but they might still be feeling the effects of dieting. And you might be like, well, how is that happening as they increase food? They just need to increase it more because when it comes to your TDEE, it's not just the increase of calories or energy, it's the increase of body fat or body weight that allows you to get back to that normalcy. So it's not just, oh, once I hit this calorie count, I'm okay. And that might also be something where you hear people talk about their calories and they say they're hungry or they're starving at a caloric intake where you might feel the absolute opposite. It's because each person's body is going to adapt to that different and each person's hunger is completely relative to what their dieting history is, what their training age is, and so many other factors here. So what you really want to look at is through dieting, you will have your leptin lowered, you will have your immune system function um, decreased, your BMR will decline, your exercise becomes more difficult, your digestion slows down, your thyroid can become sluggish, your libido can go down, and so many other factors. So reverse dieting, I get that it's hard to let go of a lean physique, but recognizing that your health is the main goal here. So being able to sit down, look at what your goals are so you can map that out and have a clear direction. Because if you don't have a clear direction, it comes very hard. Also being able to contextualize what dieting was like. We like to romanticize things that we've already been through. So then as you start to gain weight back, it's like, oh, I was so lean, I loved myself. But I bet if you went back, your friends are like, you were dragging ass, you were miserable to be around, you were tired, you were foggy. So make sure you're not romanticizing the leanness and forgetting all the other negative factors that come with it. And this isn't to scare you from dieting or doing a contest prep, just realizing each thing is a means to an end. It's with anything in life. If you are a football player and you just practice and practice and never rest and never took breaks from practicing, that would also be very detrimental. So being able to look at this at a grander scheme. So being able to recognize what that looks like, what your next goals are, and being able to go from there. So I hate to tell you, but it depends for a lot of your questions, but there are great things that you can do to make sure your mentality is in check to have the absolute best results. Because if you optimize um, your sleep, if you prioritize your stress and manage your stress, if you focus on making sure you are healing your mental headspace as well, the reverse diet will be a lot, a lot easier. And being able to let go of the fact that your body is not gonna stay that lean for forever and you really don't want it to either. So um, I've rambled on long enough, but I hope I answered plenty of your questions about reverse dieting, what all it entails, what you do with it. Um, but I will catch you guys the next one. If you have any further questions about reverse dieting, you can of course shoot us an email, admin at physiquedevelopment.com.